I'm convinced that among beginner filmmakers, this is one of the most common traps that can doom your short film before you ever even hit record. I've seen this problem over and over again in short films online, I've seen it in the one-on-one -on -one consultations I do with other filmmakers, and recently I judged a student film festival, and after watching all the entries, I saw it a bunch of times there too. So what is the problem? The problem is short films that want to be feature films. Okay, let's look at an obvious example of one of these films first, and then we'll dig into the sneakier version of these that causes just as many problems. And of course, if I'm gonna criticize anybody, might as well be me. So back in 2015, I made a short film every month for this channel. One of them was called The Flash Drive, and it was about a guy who finds a flash drive with some disturbing videos on it, and then he lands himself in the middle of a conspiracy ring. Well, we thought it would be fun to continue that story, so we did two other monthly short films as sequels to it. Then we combined all three of these into one big 37 minute long film and we submitted that to festivals. And surprise, surprise, we didn't get accepted anywhere, despite getting some nice comments in our rejection letters like this. Well, finally, Short of the Week laid it out for us crystal clear in their rejection email. The short was good, but if it's 37 minutes long like this, it needs to be great from beginning to end. In fact, if you look at their submission guidelines on their website, they spell out what every festival programmer thinks about these wannabe features. So this is symptom number one of short films that want to be feature films. It's that bloated runtime. And if your short film script is between 30 and 50 pages, that means it's probably gonna end up being about a 30 to 50 minute long film, which is right square and no man's land for short film runtimes. It's considered too long to be a short, too short to be a feature. Now that doesn't mean you can't tell a great story with the 30 to 50 minute runtime. Look at any TV drama for an example of that. You're damn right. But it does mean that your film has to be absolutely incredible if you want to find a home at festivals or even online platforms like Short of the Week. And I'd add that even if you just want to throw it on your own YouTube or Vimeo channel, it's an unusual click for the casual person who's scrolling YouTube who might discover your film because most people use YouTube for a fairly quick story or a laugh or lesson or dopamine hit. So a satisfying five to 15 minute short film might hit that sweet spot. But if they're in the mood for a longer piece of narrative content, they're probably gonna click to a streamer like Netflix instead. And there goes many of your ideal viewers. Now, granted, I put my first feature film on YouTube a decade ago and six and a half million people watched it. But my guess is with the popularity and growth of streamers now, those numbers would be harder to replicate on YouTube, but who knows? Let me know in the comments if you've seen any no budget features that have hit it big on YouTube the past few years. I'd love to watch it. But okay, let's zoom out. A long runtime is the obvious example of a short film that might want to be a feature film, but there's a more insidious example that's harder to recognize sometimes. So let's make up a short film story for this example. Let's say we're doing a short about a bank heist. So we have this bank heist crew and the wheel man is our hero. Now, as they get ready for the heist, the ringleader and the wheel man, they talk about the wheel man's ex-girlfriend because this guy just can't get over losing her. And then during the heist, the ex-girlfriend just so happens to be in line at the bank and recognizes the ringleader. So he takes her hostage, he throws her in the trunk of the getaway car, the wheel man finds out it's her, and then they have this heart-to-heart -heart rekindling their old connection. Turns out they only broke up because he'd been living this double life and not telling her about it. And it turns out she thinks it's badass. But the ringleader comes back to the hideout and says they have to kill her because she knows too much now and she's just manipulating the wheel man so that she can survive. Well, finally, everything ramps up to a climax, this big shootout where the wheel man has to choose who survives, his ringleader friend or his ex-girlfriend. We start flashing back to happier times of all three of them hanging out together. Finally, the wheel man kills the friend to save the ex, then the lovers take all the money, they drive off into the sunset, discussing plans for their first bank heist together. All right, so let's say I made this short film and it was only 12 minutes long. Could it be good? I would argue no, because if I manage to keep the runtime that low, the scope of the story is way too big to be effective in 12 minutes. And this is the other type of short film that wants to be a feature, short films with a big story scope. These films usually end up feeling rushed and overpacked with exposition, and that means the audience usually spends more time playing catch up with the backstory of all these characters and plot points than actually connecting with the story as it plays out. Now with this story in a feature or even in one of these no man's land 40 minute short films, the audience could have spent enough time with these three characters to really feel something by the time the wheel man has to choose between shooting his ex and his friend. But in 12 minutes or even 20 minutes, we'll be lucky to feel a connection with just one or two of these characters by the time we get to that big dramatic climax. 
That's why, in my opinion, specificity and a narrow scope is ideal for short film stories. But of course, with every rule, there are exceptions. Bayo hasn't had a visitor in nearly 10 years. I believe he sees something special in you. Akila? I saw this 40 minute short film recently and was blown away by how well done it was. It felt like watching a David Fincher film. Later I met up with the director to ask him how he made the film and we also talked about that controversial runtime. Typically like everybody says don't do a 40 minute long short film, right? Everyone told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> I think when it comes down to runtime and your resources and like what you're trying to make, I think it just comes down to like what are you trying to get out of it? and just reverse engineer from that. And so for me, I wanted to see how far I could push myself on a project. I just wanted to make something with my friends. Like I really didn't care anything else past that. Just like, what do you want to get out of it? You know, do you just want to like dabble in the process and see if you like it? Make a five minute thing. Do you want to like get in festivals and make a statement? It's like, do a 15 minute thing. Turns out he was already making a living as a commercial director. He had all these crew members that he'd worked with a bunch of times on those commercials. He had the skills, he had the experience to knock a short film out of the park. So he decided to go all in on this big short film story. And you gotta love that punk rock attitude of filmmaking. I don't care what happens with it after I film it. I just wanna make the best thing I can just to see how good of a thing I can make. And for this film, I think 40 minutes was the ideal runtime to tell this story. The director, Daniel Lawrence Wilson, said he submitted this film to festivals. And they all said the same thing, it's too long. But there are some advantages to him making this long film. First of all, at this runtime, you can now justify holding screenings of your film. If you have only a five minute long short film and you try to hold a screening, people aren't gonna wanna drive across town to see a five minute film and then a 10 minute Q and A, and then, okay, I guess we go home now. But at 40 minutes, you can really make an event out of that. So that's what he did. He had this big screening. That's actually where I met him and saw the film. And he did a Q&A afterwards, but it turned into a whole event and a really good networking opportunity for him. Also with a piece like this, because it's so well done and runs the length of a TV pilot, it's a strong piece to help him potentially land representation from agents and managers. And more importantly, it sets him up to investors and producers as a no-brainer for a feature indie film which he's actually already developing now with a producer who saw this film. So if you know what you're doing and you have the experience already, then going big on one of these longer, no man's land short films can still be a good option. If you have too much exposition, too much backstory, it's preventing your audience from connecting emotionally to the story that's unfolding in the present moment on screen, consider cutting out that exposition and finding a way to simply suggest or imply it instead of directly telling the audience. And one powerful way to do that would be to take a long, boring dialogue scene like this right now, add some awesome music from this video's sponsor, Artlist.io, and turn this snooze fest into a montage. As you can see, music adds so much to any film or video project, and I've been using Artlist.io's tracks in my short films on this channel, and client edits for major brands, and for pretty much every one of these YouTube videos, it's just loaded with Artlist music. The reason I keep coming back to them is they've just curated the best library I've ever seen for stock tracks that don't sound like typical crappy stock music. I love that you can search by any combination of genre or mood or type of video or whether or not there's vocals, the duration of the track, the beats per minute even. And you can click on a button to find similar tracks if you find one that's close but not quite right. With their music plans, you can also get access to their huge sound effects library. They also have stock footage, graphics templates, plugins. It's really a one-stop shop. There's different pricing plans, including lower cost plans if you just wanna use their assets for social media content. I have the Max Pro plan. That gives you everything they have, which is their stock footage, which is amazing. You get their editing templates and graphics, which are big time savers and I use all the time. And if you click the link below or scan the QR code here, you'll get two months free when you sign up for any of their annual plans. Thank you, Artlist. 
Now back to how to fix these wannabe feature shorts. Ideally, you can course correct before you actually shoot the film. And the best way to do that is to ask yourself in the writing stage, what is the most interesting aspect of this short film? Can I whittle everything else in the story down so that the short film can just be about that one thing from beginning to end? For example, with our bank heist film, what if we boiled the whole film down to a getaway driver whose ex-girlfriend has been taken hostage and we just start the film with the getaway driver in the car, nervous because there's a bank robbery going on inside, and then a guy runs out and shoves a woman into the back seat, says that she recognized him, she's our hostage now, watch her, and then he runs back into the bank. And then the entire short film is just him sitting in the car with the ex. Now we don't have to figure out how to actually film a bank robbery scene. That'll save quite a bit of budget. But also we get to focus in on the core of what makes this story ultimately interesting. We have two former lovers truly seeing each other for the first time under extremely dangerous circumstances. I would have the whole thing take place just in that getaway car, and I'm confident I can make a strong short film out of that simple premise. In this process, this is the same thing that happened with my short film Hawaii that's on the channel. Originally, it was gonna be this big noir film about a guy trying to find an old lighter that was precious to him, and he's wandering through the streets of LA at night. Finally, he realizes he's a ghost, and he was killed by somebody who asked him for a light. Eventually, I realized the story was getting too long, too expensive, so I asked myself, okay, what's the most interesting aspect of this story to me? In the end, it was, how could a man love a lighter so much that he would go through all this? The film that became Hawaii is simply me answering that question. It's a prequel to a big film that I never even made. And that $600, five minute long short film is a much stronger film than it would have been if I had ran with the original bigger story. So look, have you ever heard that problematic saying that it's just as easy to fall in love with a rich person as a poor one? Well, as a pragmatic filmmaker, I could say the same thing about falling in love with a small short film idea versus a big short film idea. Small short films just give you so many practical advantages as a filmmaker, and it makes it a lot easier to do things like get into film festivals, get seen online, save money, increase production value, it's easier to wrap successfully, make more films, expand your network, and grow your portfolio faster. And if you're ambitious and you think simpler and shorter films, that sounds too easy, I wanna challenge myself. Well, it's very hard and it takes a lot of maturity as a storyteller to find elegant and efficient ways to keep the runtime and the world of your story small, yet still make an impact with your audience. In fact, many authors say writing a short story is harder than writing a novel, if you can wrap your head around that. And that's actually why I spent many, many months this year creating a short film course from scratch to help filmmakers make these kinds of short films. It's called Wrapped in 30 Days, and in it I go more in depth on how to make the most out of short film, taking a very practical approach to the format, and guide you step by step in writing and shooting your own crowd-pleasing short film in a month. 50 students already ran through the beta version of the course, and it was probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my life, seeing the short films they made with it. And some of these folks, it was their first short film, which is so crazy. But if you want to learn more about it, check out wrapped.school and join the waiting list because it's going to be at a huge discount for one week only when it launches next month. That's it for this time. And remember, they call them short films for a reason.